Corps flourished. One by one her students died after Tsunade ran from Konoha with all the pain rising up in her heart. And Konoha was left with morons who were nowhere near as talented as they should have been. No one in good conscience would blame the hot-headed Senju princess for leaving, but many wondered what life would have been like if the older Kunoichi had returned. The older woman couldn't help but to notice the dip in voice, the inflection as if thinking about the aftereffects of the war followed by the Kayubi had killed some part of him. He was so young, almost all nins were young they rarely managed to make it past 40 and those that did generally retired. Studying the boy, Tsunade could only frown something besides what was happening in Konoha was eating at him and she had to wonder at it. She could easily tell that he was too young to have gone to war and come back completely unaffected. What else is eating you kid? Nothing I'm willing to talk about outside the village. Genma scoffed at himself. It had been stupid of himself and Asuma to talk about such things outside of the village. Both of them knew it. He would never ever put his family in such danger again. Not only that but he had to think over the fact that both of those two nins of unknown origin had known information that none should know. In fact we have a mole inside the village, Asuma and I were only given this assignment a short time ago. The older blonde frowned, that could spell disaster for Konoha it could mean the destruction of Konoha something her grandfather had worked so hard for. Something her uncle and teacher had continued. It made her heart ache thinking of them. She loved them and cursed them all the same. Closing her eyes she left the silence fall cold between her current traveling companion. Before they both began to speed up each of them needed the time to think to themselves about the difficulties that were fast beginning to approach. Oh, it's been a while, Sensei. Jiraiya smirked. Slightly at seeing his teacher as well as the four clan heads helping him jump in utter surprise at his voice. He could easily see that they had worked through a lot of information and it made him wonder exactly what had happened to put the lot of them into such a tizzy. He knew from walking among the civilians that they were upset about some ruling involving his goddaughter and the Kurama heir. The fact that they thought the boy didn't deserve any punishment for what had happened showed that the civilians had utterly lost their minds. Jiraiya, why can't you ever use a door? Sarutobi asked, before moving from his stooped position to sit in one of the chairs that surrounded the table that was loaded down with books. He'd known his student had arrived that morning at around 2 a.m. because of the guards and ward signature that recorded everyone who entered Konoha. He'd also been thankful when the younger man had gone somewhere to sleep instead of waking him from a relatively peaceful sleep. That would make things far too easy. Now what exactly has happened? Jiraiya wasn't usually forceful and was in fact damn good at being as subtle as needed. It was why he was such a good spy in comparison to others. He had also trained a number of men and women to take his place should that time ever come that he needed to retire. I suppose you didn't read the whole letter? Here is inside, looking over the younger man. Jiraiya in a way was exactly like the six-year-old that looked up at him used to being ignored and used to having to try his hardest to get the smallest amount of attention. At the same time, the man before him had grown so much in the same way. Jiraiya no longer tried to get the approval that would come from his sensei or even the people of Konoha. Instead the man did what he felt was right and often proved he had a bigger moral code than many knew. Oh no, I read it but I want the details old man. Jiraiya rarely felt angry but for once it was riding up inside him with a type of rage he'd never felt before. The white-haired man had been angry at Orochimaru for turning on them. He'd been angry when Minato had been killed and the middle-aged Nen had been furious when he'd been denied the right to take his goddaughter and Kakashi away from the village. The Hokage could only sigh, well it all started about a month before this incident happened. The older man replied, before going on to talk about the unfair grading. The fact that he'd had the young girl retested before having the academy gone over with a fine-tooth comb. How Naruto had moved in with Kakashi and actually started making friends, 
before running into the Uchiha boy who tried to hurt the girls because he felt that he was above the laws. By the time the Hokage was done explaining things Jiraiya was literally putting of enough chakra to knock the building down. Good God, old man what had you been doing while I was away? Jiraiya knew he shouldn't blame his former teacher, but wasn't his job to be on top of things? The white-haired ninja simply sat before rubbing his hands over his face. He was so tired and exhausted. He wanted nothing more than to sit down and relax. Yes, well battling with Danzo and the clan heads have been eating up my time. I'm tired of playing games Jiraiya, I've had enough of this. There was another reason I called you back. Sarutobi had a bit of a twinkle in his eye that made all sane ninja nervous. The elderly man was plotting and that was never good for whoever it was directed at. When Jiraiya simply raised an eyebrow, here is and continue, I want you to take the Hokage's hat. Jiraiya simply had to pause before turning a disbelieving look at the old man. He was mildly amused and appealed. Something in him cringed at the idea of taking that hat knowing that it had been Minato's dream and it had killed him. Orochimaru had wanted that hat and it had driven him insane. What did he know of power of politics? Certainly he'd been forced to report to the capital several times during his life as a ninja, but that didn't mean he'd be the best choice. Have you lost your mind old man? I think that you are the best person for the job Jiraiya, as much as you play at being a pervert and slacking off. I more than anyone know that you work hard and are quite involved in a steady relationship. Here is and could see that this didn't sit well with his former student and he could understand the distaste for the job. When his own sensei had passed the torch to him it had been in the middle of war, and it had ultimately killed a part of Serutobi that he hadn't known he still had. I'll think about it old man, I'll need to talk to my partners first. Jiraiya stopped there, he would need to talk to the spies he had trained, he would need to talk to Miharu and he would have to talk to both Tsunade and Kakashi as the three of them were all involved with one little girl. When his teacher simply nodded his head toward him, Jiraiya could only huff before disappearing out into Konoha. He needed time to think and was positive that the tower would just be cause for distraction. Oh, Tenton sighed. Two days ago Naruto had been put in the hospital and Konoha as a whole was rift with rumors. Some were that Naruto had done this on purpose, but those were being shot down by a majority of the senior nin specifically clan ninja and others who had apparently watched over her friend since she was a child. This of course caused the young female to have a whole host of questions. Why had Naruto who had been forced to live at a ratty orphanage in Eastside need to have Anbu guards? For another matter, why did Naruto know Hitaki Kakashi or the Serutobi clan so well? Simply in case of demographics, she shouldn't have run into either one of them. Though there had been a slight relief today while sitting with Naruto, most of the doctors and nurses that were working there didn't think anything about talking around the children. Which was actually a very bad thing considering the fact that if she was an enemy Tenton would have more information on most of the hospital that she should have. They talked about injured nins that were in the hospital, high-ranking officials and all sorts of things that made the young girls inside squirm. Allowing civilians to take over the hospital had been an awful idea, and the young weapon mistress was surprised someone hadn't been assassinated already because all the gossip. Though with all the gossip that was flying around Kenton was able to listen in on what one of the doctors were saying about Naruto, and it pissed the young girl off like nothing else. They wanted to do all sorts of tests on Naruto because they didn't understand how her chakra could be so condensed, they didn't have permission from the Hokage but they didn't much seem to care. They also talked about how Naruto was a monster and they didn't understand why the Hokage and so many of the Medi Nins were trying to protect the girl. In fact sometime last night something had occurred and all civilian doctors had been ordered not to come into the room at all. Naruto had been taken out of their care and was now in the Medi Nins ward. The room was till rather large but it was cozier. 
By the time lunch rolled around Ten Ten's eyes were wide with the amount of information she'd gotten from careless adults. The things that went on in this hospital couldn't be exactly legal in some cases and she knew that when she got home that afternoon she was going to have a long talk with her dad. Was it even safe for Naruto to be in a place like this? Ah, Tenten, as her name was spoken the bun-haired girl looked up to find one of Naruto's classmates looking at her with a curious glance. He also had two different stacks of schoolwork. One was for her and the other was more than likely for Naruto, Tenten could say she felt sorry for her younger friend. Naruto was going to have to play catch up again after having to do the same the weeks that school was cancelled. Shino right? Thanks for bringing my schoolwork. Naruto's is over in this stack. The brown-eyed girl informed the young Aburame boy, because Naruto had been moved they had to rearrange everything in her room. But in a way this was a good thing there was no telling how long it could take for Naruto to get better. Though from the way the blonde acted she was going to hate being coped up in this hell hole, as she would likely call it. Hi, it's nice to see you again. The younger boy bowed lightly before moving to sit across from the older girl. He didn't know much about Naruto but she had seemed like a nice girl and she'd managed to get Yakumo to open up which was something most of the clan heirs hadn't been able to do. Though the few times he'd heard the blonde girl speak the Aburame boy had been blown away at her language and her disregard for social norms. When he'd asked his father about her, Shibi had simply shook his head before telling his son that he needed to get to know the girl himself and form his own opinion. Shino would be the first to admit that he was rather antisocial, and that he had a hard time expressing himself. Though the Aburame boy was eternally grateful that some people didn't mind his oddness, like Hinata or Kiba, neither of them had a problem with his insects. But for a similar reason he disliked Ino and Sakura because they always made him feel bad when they spoke about his insects and clan. The young boy knew that they didn't really mean any harm with what they said but it hurt nonetheless to be talked about in such a manner. Tenton smile, so what did you go over in class today? You know I never thought that I would miss classes, but the longer I was here the more I wanted to be in class. It had been painful to watch Naruto all day, but it was looking better the little blonde wasn't so pale and seemed to be getting a bit of color into her cheeks. Nothing much, we had a genjutsu lecture as well as a very long history lecture. I like Amino sensei but he gets very dull with history you can tell he don't like teaching it, though he is very thorough and makes it easy for us to learn. He much prefers speaking about fuinjutsu or ninjutsu, he's one of the few demolition specialists that work in Konoha. Shino liked Amino sensei the man was kind and relatively informal and always insisted on being called Ruka. Oh, we've had him as a lecturer in the upper level classes before. It's almost always about Fuinjutsu, they said he could be a master if someone was available to teach him. But the Yandaimi died, and Jiraiya of the Sanin is never here long enough to teach him. Actually he supplies a lot of the seals and tags that we have at Da's shop. Tenton had never really met the man but knew that her father liked him well enough. I'm not surprised, Amino's sensei is more like a scholar than a fighter. I'm not sure how he came to be a ninja, Shino replied easily, it was refreshing to have a simple conversation with another person. Generally, he spoke with Hinata, Kiba, Shikamaru, Choji or Sasuke. None of them liked to speculate or have long discussions about anything and Choji and Sasuke were both still very awkward around him as if they weren't entirely sure what to make of him. Tenton grinned, she had to agree with him on that and the young teacher was just a pad on the effeminate side. Oh, I have a question for you and this isn't meant to be offensive or intrude on your clan policies or anything. But can you really talk to bugs? It was something she had wondered about often. The Aburame clan rarely came into her DAS shop other than to replace Kanai and on occasion seals the group of them were disturbingly self-sufficient at least according to her father. 
Shino blinked in surprise before a smile that was hidden by his high collar appeared on his lips. Yes, but it's closer to telepathy than speaking to them. Insects don't have a structured language like people do. It's closer to a movie, they don't have words or opinions. So every time you ask them a question you get a picture response? Tenton had to admit that she was terribly curious about it. It sounded so interesting and when Shino nodded at her question, more ideas and questions began to pop into her mind. The young girl couldn't help but to ask, can you speak with other things in that way like humans or other animals? I don't honestly know, I've never heard of anyone in the clan trying anything like that. Though I have heard rumors that we've been trying to cultivate a different species. I can't really say more or my family will get mad at me. That was one thing that all clans had. A rule of not speaking to in depth about the abilities of the clan. The first offense could get you kicked out of the clan and there was no higher form of shame than being removed from the clan register. Tenton could only nod, I was just wondering, but thanks for answering my questions I'll try not to cry. It gave both of them something to wonder on. Tenton found the idea of speaking to someone else inside their head to be fantastic but it was a lot like the Yamanaka clan. Yet at the same time it was nothing like the Yamanaka clan. The Yamanaka clan had a lot of drawbacks that came with their ability to throw themselves into someone else's body. One of the biggest was if they didn't get out before an enemy was killed then they were killed too. Shino nodded, it's alright. A quiet relaxed air seemed to settle over the two of them but it didn't stop the two of them from speaking about other things like Konoha and who their favorite ninja happened to be. Shino would say his favorite happened to be someone from his clan, the man who had been the first to discover the Kakaichu and create the bound that made the was what made the Aburame clan what it was. Tenten on the other hand was extremely fond of the Lady Tsunade and Shino couldn't fault her for it. There was a sad lack of well-trained Kunoichi in Konoha. It was uncommon for different grades to mix so it hadn't been surprising when they realized they didn't know much about the other. Tenten had been surprised she discovered how many clan heirs were in the same class and could only ask about the security nightmares it must cause for Anbu, which caused the young Aburame boy to snicker in agreement and over the next several hours the two enjoyed getting to know one another and developed a healthy respect for the other. Oh. Asuma sighed, this would be the eight house they had gone to in the land of fire and the youngest Sarutobi boy was actually truly amazed at the amount of money that Tsunade had been able to spend and that was saying something. The payout had put a nice dent in her creditors but Shizun wasn't out of money yet and had informed him that her mentor had debts in cloud and wind country. But most of them were in here in fire country and that if she got to pay most of them off, Shizun would be ever grateful. But that was something that did concern the Sarutobi man. Shizun seemed to be going above and beyond to help Tsunade and while he understood the need to pay the woman back Shizun didn't seem to be living a life on her own and that was never healthy. Light brown eyes studied the woman in front of him. She was just as cute as she had been when they had gone to the academy. Those dark eyes seemed to have a relatively happy shine to them. While her hair was in the same style it had always been longer sides cut at an upward angle to a short back with shorter choppy bangs. She was still petite, thin and in a lot of ways not so different she'd grown into her figure wasn't as clumsy as she once was. Anyo, Sarutobi san? Shizun was looking up at her male companion with concern. Asuma had been a quiet for most of the run but she could tell he was slightly horrified that all the money Tsunade had managed to make was going into paying off investors. The young medic couldn't help but agree with the expression because this was probably six or seven times the budget of Fire Country. Call me Asuma please, Sarutobi is my dad, the young Junin reminded and had a hard time hiding the smile that ran across his face at the blush that settled on hers. There was another thing that surprised him, Shizun hadn't outgrown the formalities that she'd grown up with. 
Most of the nins of Konoha got over that relatively quickly unless they were in polite society with the lords or daimyo. There was just little point when most of their clients were common people that generally looked at them with disdain. Alright, but I was wondering why you simply didn't go back with Tsunade and Genma. Shizun had to admit to being curious. He hadn't be required to go back though Genma had seemed positive that Asuma would stay with her throughout the whole thing. If anything happened to you, Tsunade would blame the two of us then Konoha. Neither of us really thought it was a good idea to take the chance. We both know you can take care of yourself. It's always wise to have backup and that's really what I am at the moment, though I do feel for Genma when he gets back home. Asuma replied easily, the last thing he needed was a female that was willing to take his head off. He could see that she was accepting of the answer if not entirely pleased with it. Shizun had to sigh. They were right if anything did happen to her Tsunade would blame them and become extremely angry and would probably take it out on the two of them if for no other reason than she could. Her mentor no longer had respect for anyone except perhaps her teammates or her former teacher. Because of this the older woman didn't care who she hurt and Shizun was oftentimes forced.